So welcome to the lecture on biomes. What we're going to be talking about here are the various regions of the earth that support life. So when we talk about where on earth we have life, we have it in what's known as the biosphere. So bio, keep that term in mind, that prefix. Bio means life. So the biosphere is going to be the portion of the earth that will contain life. So look at the little diagram below. You know, we have the atmosphere, we have the biosphere, we have the litho, litho, lithosphere, the hydrosphere. We don't have life living up in the sky. I mean, yes, birds fly through the sky and insects, etc., but they don't stay up there all the time. They eventually come to the ground. That's the biosphere. So what we're going to do is look at, say, these different regions of the Earth that contain life and what's unique about them and what life is unique to those regions. So as we look at regions of the Earth, or what we're going to call biomes, let me put that term in here for us as well. Okay, so a biome is going to be a region of Earth that contains a unique diversity of life. Oh, let me make sure you guys can see all this. Okay, so we're going to talk about different biomes. There are lots and lots and lots of different biomes on Earth, lots of different ways to define biomes. We're just going to look at kind of the broad picture of what biomes are. But biomes exist within the biosphere. And when we look at this, the two, or the, the big thing we look at is, why does life live where it does? It's because of the climate, temperature, solar radiation, rainfall, pH of the soil, pH of the water, etc. So a couple big factors help determine climate, and these are solar exposure and the tilt, or I should say the the position of the region on Earth all help determine the climate that a region experiences. So for those of us in the Midwest, consider where we are on the Earth geographically. Let me go to the red. Okay, so if you're talking about you know, Midwest, that region right there. Depending upon the time of year, if the sun's the earth is tilted towards the sun, the Midwest is tilted towards the sun, we get a lot of solar exposure. That means we have summer. We have longer days, we have more sunlight, it gets hotter, etc. But as that earth rolls around and spins around the sun, we eventually tilt away from the sun. And when we tilt away from the sun, yeah, this is when we get into what we call our autumnal equinox. This is autumn. Consider where we're at. And we're not getting as much sun exposure. We go further into fall, etc. Later into fall, into winter, we're even further away. So our days are shorter it's colder, etc. Our climate is dictated by that solar exposure and then the position of the earth or the position of the biome on the earth as the earth is moving around again helps dictate the climate. So if you're in equatorial region you get pretty much the same amount of sunlight year-round. Go down to the tropics in January gets light about 6, 6.30 in the morning, gets dark about 7 o'clock in the evening. Go down to the tropics in July, gets light at about 6.30 in the morning, gets dark at about 7.30, 8 o'clock in the evening. There's not a big difference between January and July with the amount of sunlight you receive in the tropics. It's pretty consistent. That's why they have a tropical climate. But for us in the Midwest, we have what we call the temperate climate. It changes seasonally. Okay, so there are differences there because, uh, again, our position on the earth and then 
where we are throughout the year in regards to the so solar exposure we receive. Now air patterns will also play a role in determining the climate of a region. So how much air do you get? How much wind? What type of wind? If you notice, again, in the Midwest, we, we usually get the hot, dry winds out of the south, somewhat south, southwest, and we get those cold winter winds out of the north. So that can influence your climate. Um, again, those wind patterns play a role in carrying moisture, carrying uh, temperature, etc., to particular regions of the earth. And depending upon where you're at on the land mass, are you closer to the ocean? Are you further away? Does the air come in carrying wet moisture from the ocean? Does it move across land, drop the moisture, and still come across land, but now it's hot, dry air? All these things, again, are playing a role in determining our climate. And then the other major feature we want to mention when we talk about climate are things like landforms, mountains, big wide open stretches of prairie. Land-based features can influence climate. So with the mountain example, a mountain can cause a thing called a rain shadow. Now the rain shadow, this is going to be a dry side of the mountain. And if you have a dry side, that usually equals a desert type of biome, a hot, dry climate. Okay, so think about if this is California, this little slice of land here that we're looking at with this picture. Say that's California, and we get those wet winds coming off of the ocean, carrying moisture, and that gets close to the mountain ranges, that moisture comes down. So think about California. This part of California that's coastal <clears throat> is a huge, huge growing environment. Fairly moderate climate, mild climate. We produce massive amounts of fruits and vegetables on the coastal side of California because of its climate. And that climate is, de a lot of it is influenced by the wind pattern coming off the land, off the ocean carrying the moisture, but then that mountain range that causes the wind to get blocked. And because the moisture is heavy, it gets blocked by the mountain range, the wind drops the moisture, and then as the wind or the air patterns carry over the mountain and they come back down the backside, they're hot and dry air. So this is the backside of the mountain. This would be Las Vegas, Nevada, um, parts of Texas, etc., that get rid of that that all experience <clears throat> a desert type of <coughs> excuse me desert type of biome. That's really bad. That's supposed to say desert. Okay, so the desert environment, the desert biome, sits. It might only sit 10 miles away from this region right here, but that mountain makes a huge difference. Okay, So those different features, factors, etc., all play a role in determining climate. Something, let me move this up, something to stress when we talk about climate and weather. Okay, so climate... Oops. Climate is the long-term conditions of a region, okay? So think about how much rainfall do you receive across the year? What's the average amount of temperature across the year? What's the average amount of sunlight across the year? That is what we talk about with climate. Now, weather is the short-term conditions of a region. 
daily, maybe weekly. So you watch the weather. You watch the news. What's the weather going to be like tomorrow? Oh, we're going to have 92 degrees and it's going to be sunny. Or, oh, we got a 80% chance of showers. That's your weather. Climate is what do we experience in Illinois over the course of the entire year, 12 months. All right, so big things to keep in mind. Weather patterns, we've always had storms. We've always had droughts. We've always had weather. But what we are concerned about is looking at climate. What is the long-term conditions over the course of term over the course of a year how is that changing that's the big concern with climate change that is we see climates changing and those conditions over the course of a year are becoming more and more unpredictable more and more erratic we're seeing the ends of the spectrum more often more severity in storms, more frequency of severity. Look at the temperature data when we talk about how many record-setting months or years of temperature have we had. Yeah, we've always had 100 plus degree days, but we've never had lots of those days in a row year after year after year after year. That's the concern about climate change. Now, how does climate change influence life? Well, how does it play a role in the biomes? Okay, so biomes, again, just reinforcing this, are regions that Okay, so here's another way of defining a biome. Regions that contain specific groups of producers and consumers you have specific plants, producer bases, that determines your consumer level. That's what makes a biome unique. Now, biomes are determined primarily by the average temperature and and rainfall. So temperature and rainfall, that's what really determines your biome. Now temperature can be determined or influenced by solar radiation, landforms, proximity to the ocean, all those things we were mentioning before. But these two variables are the key variables for biome distribution. How much rain do you get? And what's your average temperature across the year? So a biome has a range. Okay, let's, let's say, let's talk about the woodland here. So there's our woodland. That biome, this is the range of temperature somewhere between, and this is all in Celsius, somewhere between about three or four degrees Celsius up to about maybe 18 Celsius. Will, will a woodland get 20 degrees Celsius temperatures? Sure, that, that can happen, but it shouldn't become more common. Now, the concern is what happens if you shift the range of the biome, the range of temperature received by the biome. And if all of a sudden those average temperatures start going like this, year after year after year after year, and you start seeing those temperatures change where, wow, we're not getting as cold as we used to and we're getting hotter than we used to, and there's a pattern there and it continues year after year, this woodland biome is not going to be a woodland biome anymore. It's going to start transitioning and moving more towards grassland or savanna biomes. Same concept with rainfall, precipitation. You know, if a biome is supposed to receive this range, and then all of a sudden it starts receiving more or less, that biome starts transitioning. So and that's what climate change is doing, is it's causing biomes to begin transitioning. And the concern is, how does that influence all the living things in that biome that are adapted to those historical ranges? Some species will adapt and do well, but other species are going extinct because of this. So we'll start talking about that in our next lecture here.